Um, hello everyone, my name is Ashna Samtani Singhania. I'm a business advisor at BBC. I am grateful to be living in the unceded lands of the Moskuam, Squamish, and Slewatut people. I invite you to write in the chat whose lands you are working from or joining us from. There will be a link put in the chat for you to have access to the names as well. And while you are typing in, we'd love to hear if there's any topic that you want us to cover uh, or to have a future webinar about um, going forward. Please tell us which topic you'd like in during the feedback poll that we'll have at the end of the session. All right, so what do we offer? We provide support for your small business journey. journey sorry. Um, we offer financing to get businesses started. We've got, uh, we offer operating capital to fuel growth. We offer more flexibility than traditional lenders because we take a holistic approach and provide loans based on business viability, not based on formula lending. Um, this means we provide uh, loans to a diverse range of women-owned businesses. We provide you with integrated services, including complementary training, mentoring, business advising. Uh, besides that, we conduct a range of business skill development workshops and have uh, personalized business advice. Uh, we know the right questions to ask and the right resources to connect you with. In our mentoring programs, you can connect with a network of women entrepreneurs and experts across the province. Um, you can learn more about our services at we-bc.ca and sign up for our e-news blasts to get notified on all the new programs that we've, uh, we, we've got to offer. Today's webinar, we have two lovely ladies in front of us. Uh, who are going to talk to us more about um, free trade agreements and their benefits for women-owned businesses in BC. Did you know that Canada has 15 free trade agreements that cover 49 countries? These agreements give Canadian businesses access to nearly 90% of export markets. Um, in other words, you could have access to over 1.5 billion potential customers worldwide by considering entering into any of these markets. Uh, we are hosting today two managers, uh, Ghana Drissard and um, uh, Heather Louis. Uh, both of them are managers at the Trade Policy and Negotiations Branch, BC, Ministry of Jobs and Economic Recovery in, and Innovations. Uh, welcome both Ghana and Heather. I'm going to hand over the microphone to you. Please introduce yourselves and take it forward. Thank you, Archana. Thank you, Neda. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Good morning, everyone. Um, and uh, yeah, we are pleased to, to join this, uh, this webinar and talk to you about the free trade agreements, about Canada's uh, free trade agreements and uh, how to use them step by step. Uh, so my name is uh, Ganna Drozd and uh, I'm manager at the Trade Policy and Negotiations branch with the BC Ministry of Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation. And I'm joined today by my colleague Heather Louis, uh, manager in the same branch. And uh, before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking today uh, from the territories of the Likwangan speaking peoples, the Esquimalt and Sengiz First Nations, uh, traditional land keepers of the land where I uh, live, work and play. And uh, a couple of words about myself be before I begin. Uh, so I've joined the Trade Policy and Negotiations branch uh, two and a half years ago. And uh, in my current capacity as a manager, I help BC companies to better understand Canada's free trade agreements. Um, and uh, I deliver on how to, to use the benefits of them. And I deliver presentations at the webinars like this one and also provide the one-on-one -on -one assistance to, to the companies. And before joining the BC government, I worked in international trade promotion for, for the French and for, for the British governments. 
Um, so Heather, would you like to say a couple words about your yourself, your background before we begin? Sure, thanks Ghana. So I'm Heather and I'm actually based in our Vancouver office. And um, before I begin as well, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking from the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and Salatooth nations, traditional land keepers of the land where we live, work and play. And I joined the BC government fairly recently last year. Um, and I work in disputes, um, but I also support outreach with Ghana and a couple of other colleagues. And um, before joining the BC government, I was living in Washington, D.C., where I lived for over five years. And I worked in trade for the um, U.S. federal government and then moved back home to Vancouver, where I'm from. And uh, that was a pandemic move. So it's been a, a couple of fun years since then. Great. Great. Thanks, Heather. Um, so in our today's presentation, uh, we will address Canada's free trade agreements and uh, how, to, how to navigate them step by step. Um, so here is a quick uh, overview of our presentation and uh, we'll kick it off with the welcoming remarks by the Minister of State for Trade. And then we'll briefly present on what free trade agreements are, where in world Canada has them, and we'll provide an overview of some key Canada's free trade agreements. We'll then move into uh, the opportunities that they offer for goods and services. Uh, and uh, we'll walk you through the key steps that the exporter of goods needs to be aware of uh, when using the free trade agreements. And we'll also introduce some, some tools and resources towards the end. So we hope that our presentation will last approximately 30 to 40 minutes to allow enough time for Q&A uh, session at the end. But please don't be shy and if there are any questions that pop into your mind during the presentation, please raise your hand or uh, send them in the chat and we'll try to address them as we go. So uh, the BC Ministry of Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation aims to make life more affordable for British Columbians by building a strong and sustainable economy and improve the standard of living. And of course, there are many ways to foster the economic recovery and growth. And uh, one way is to encourage businesses like you to leverage the opportunities that are found in free trade agreements and also to diversify the export markets. And this is our job today. And uh, with this, I'd like to kick it off with a short welcome video from the Minister of State for Trade, who will explain what support is available to you. So bear with me as I'm trying to share the, the video. Hello, I'm George Chow, Minister of State for Trade. I'm pleased to add my support and welcome you to this session. The goal for this session is to share the benefits and opportunity of Canada's domestic and international free trade agreements, and to ensure that everyone in BC's diverse regions, communities, and sectors receive the information needed. Free trade agreements help open new markets as well as advance and protect BC's competitive advantages. They are a critical part of attracting new investment into BC's regions. They apply to all sectors of the economy, including forestry, agricultural, intellectual property, clean tech, and mining, to name just a few. I'm proud to say that last year, we held close to 50 information sessions like this one with approximately 1,500 participants covering all of BC's regions. We have also held sessions for Indigenous businesses and women-owned businesses. Now, because of COVID-19, we are continuing the webinars, and my hope is we can resume in-person sessions when the time is right. The COVID-19 pandemic has made international trade much more challenging for the foreseeable future. Thankfully, the very good news is Canada has 14 free trade agreements covering 51 countries, including a new Canada-US-Mexico agreement an agreement with the European Union, Japan, Korea, and many others that, if used correctly, can help lower your costs and provide much needed certainty in these uncertain times. Free trade agreements are complex. My staff are here today to help you understand how they work. I want to ensure that you are supported 
as you plan for the future. We are also offering help with export and trade readiness through our Export Navigator program. And we have in-market experts and other resources available in Canada that you will hear about today. I wish you all a successful info session. Thank you. Okay. So now let's let's move back into into our presentation. Um, a second, as I'm resharing the screen back. Okay. So hopefully we are all back. Uh, so Heather, I wanted to handle it to you for your presentation on free trade agreements. Right. So, oh, sorry. Good. Okay. Um, so what are free trade agreements? You've probably heard of the World Trade Organization or the WTO, which sets the rules of trade between nations. And a free trade, free trade agreement is essentially an agreement between two or more countries to facilitate trade and eliminate trade barriers between them. And this agreement goes beyond the WTO commitments. And FTAs do this. Um, the most visible aspect of them are tariff reductions and elimination. And these are some of the most tangible aspects of um, FTAs. Some FTAs cover only goods, while others include services, investment, government procurement, um, small and medium enterprises, e-commerce, digital trade, and inclusive trade. And it's important to remember that FTAs are two-way street, meaning Canada takes on the obligations, but our FTA partners take them on as well. And when parties to an FTA aren't meeting their commitments, they made an agreement, um, most FTAs and the WTO have um, recourse for disputes. And uh, next slide, Ghana. So as you know, Canada is a trading nation. Today we have 15 trade agreements that cover over um, 49 countries, giving you access to about 1.5 billion potential consumers worldwide. On this map, you can see a network of Canada's FTAs. So for example, in blue, those are FTAs that have been implemented, including the US, um, EU, and Japan. It's worth mentioning that some FTAs are bilateral, meaning two countries. So Canada and South Korea, Canada, Israel, Canada, Chile, and then others are multilateral with multiple partners, including Kuzma, um, Canada, United States, and Mexico, and um, the CPTPP, which Ghana will talk about. And sometimes FTAs overlap as well. For example, Canada is in FTAs with Mexico through Kuzma and also through the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, that's CPTPP. So the good news for you is that you can choose under which FTA you want to claim preferential terms of trade. And underway and active negotiations that we are also supporting um, include Canada's trade negotiations with the UK, India, and Indonesia. Okay, thank you, Heather. So uh, just uh, to add probably a couple of words uh, on, uh, on the inclusive trade and uh, modern trade, uh, modern free trade agreements. So as part of uh, Canada's trade diversification strategy, Canada is advancing an inclusive trade approach to, uh, to make sure that the benefits and opportunities that flow from trade agreements are more widely shared and also include the underrepresented groups such as women, uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, and indigenous peoples. And uh, some examples of uh, the inclusive trade approach, they include gender-based analysis plus that is conducted before entering into negotiations on uh, the free trade agreements with the other partners. Uh, and uh, also free trade agreements, they include the uh, some some modern free trade agreements include the chapters and uh, committees on uh, trade and gender uh, to engage the stakeholders and to identify the opportunities for collaboration on inclusive trade. So now I wanted uh, us to move into some key Canada's free trade agreements. So a couple of words uh, about Canada-US-Mexico agreement known as CUSMA. 
So this agreement entered into force on July uh, 1st, 2020, uh, and it largely expands and modernizes the NAFTA that has been in place since uh, 1994. So most importantly, Kusma protects and preserves our zero tariff access to the US market, which is our largest uh, trading partner and also to, to Mexico. So for Canada, Kusma also creates new market access opportunities in the agricultural sector uh, through some new market access, uh, in particular uh, dairy exports to the US or new possibilities for refined sugar and sugar containing products exports to the US. And also Kusma protects uh, Canada's supply management system. So there is another improvement that Kusma introduced. Uh, it is, uh, there is no more prescribed format for a certificate of origin that you need to fill in to prove that your product originates in Canada. Oops, sorry, somehow it's, um, the slides changed. <laughs> uh, so this certificate of origin uh, now only has the uh, minimum uh, data elements to it. And there is also uh, an, uh, an improvement to advanced ruling application, which uh, now uh, becomes available online. Uh, and I will go uh, into the area of advanced ruling. I'll mention it uh, in, a, in one of my next slides as well in more detail. So uh, now let's, uh, let's move into the comprehensive and progressive agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, this is one of Canada's most recently implemented free trade agreements. It is currently in force for eight members. So Canada, Australia, uh, Japan, New Zealand, Mexico, uh, Singapore, Vietnam, and Peru. And among the ones who ratified the agreement, the key BC markets are Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and Chile. So BC through Canada uh, is on a, now on a level playing field uh, with those countries that have preferential access in the CPTPP markets and also has a leg up on, uh, on those who do not have the same level of access. And by this preferential uh, access might not last forever. And since the CPTPP entered into force, uh, there was already the European Union that has entered into free trade negotiations into free trade agreements actually with uh, Vietnam and Japan. And uh, it is currently in negotiations with uh, New Zealand and Australia. And uh, I would also like to emphasize that the CPTPP area might expand over time. So there is currently the United Kingdom um, that is negotiating its accession as we speak. Uh, and uh, you might have heard that China and uh, Taiwan have submitted their applications uh, and uh, South Korea and Taiwan as well expressed their interest to join. Uh, there have even been some sig uh, signals from the US that they might consider rejoining the, the CPTPP at some point. Uh, so of course, the um, given our geographic location, uh, BC's focus for a long time has been on the, on the US and Asia Pacific, but uh, this focus has been shifting over the years uh, since the uh, Canada-European Union Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement known as CETA um, entered into force and uh, it actually became a contributing factor to, to the shift uh, of, uh, of trade. So with the number, uh, with the, this market, uh, the European Union, which is a market of almost half, half a billion of people, uh, it also represents the world's largest trading bloc and is also one of the major sources of foreign direct investment into, into BC. So uh, the CETA is Canada's most ambitious trade agreement and uh, it provisionally entered into force in uh, 2017. Uh, and uh, we are now in the fifth year of, uh, of the CETA provisional application. And the provisional application means that 95% of the agreement actually is, is in effect. So it is basically for, for the trade of in goods and in services, it means that it is in full application. Uh, so uh, the uh, Canada and uh, the European Union, they will bring uh, the CETA into actual full force, uh, including all the chapters once each uh, European Union member state ratifies it. So far, 15 out of 27 new member states have ratified it. So uh, the provisional application means for, for Canada and for BC that um, the, uh, the CETA, it helps to, to advance the, the trade. 
uh, but there are some um, aspects of, of investment uh, that will enter into force once the, uh, the full uh, ratification takes place. And uh, the CETA is the, the most comprehensive and progressive agreement because it covers virtually all aspects of, of trade and eliminates uh, or reduces um, really lots of trade barriers. So CETA has eliminated uh, tariffs on 98% of Canadian goods, presenting now new opportunities for uh, BC producers, uh, including on agri-food, fish and seafood products. CETA also addresses uh, non-tariff barriers. It streamlines trade in uh, services and uh, it promotes investments and provides access to, to the government procurement on all levels and uh, enhances the labor mobility. So CETA was also one of the first uh, trade agreement to address tools and resources for uh, small and medium-sized enterprises. And uh, it also opened uh, procurement opportunities at all levels of the government. So the CETA helps to increase BC's goods exports to the European Union and our exports reached um, over $1.5 to $2 million per year since 2018 versus $1 million uh, prior to, to the CETA. So the key markets for BC goods exports in the European Union uh, include Germany, uh, Netherlands, Poland, Italy and France. And uh, among other sectors, the CETA improved access to uh, the European Union for BC suppliers of medical devices, ICT products, uh, metals and minerals, forest goods, and uh, most uh, fish and uh, seafood products. Uh, and uh, of course, BC providers of services, for example, forest management, uh, environmental and engineering research and development, and ICT and technical consulting uh, also benefit from, from the access, from the new access that is provided under the CETA. So and now uh, let's, uh, let's dive into some opportunities that are offered by FTAs for, uh, for companies in um, different sectors. So for example, tariff cuts and tariff elimination, as, as mentioned earlier, they are of course, some of the most visible and tangible aspects of FTAs. And they reduce the cost of your uh, goods and make your products more, more competitive. And for most of Canada's FTAs, uh, around 95 to 99% of tariffs on Canadian products um, have been eliminated. And uh, tariff reductions, they also, um, reduce the costs of imports into BC. So you might find that uh, uh, you can bring an ingredient or um, a tool or part of your uh, production uh, material from elsewhere in, into Canada and uh, produce the finished product here and save some money. So it is important to note here that um, for the product to qualify under uh, for the preferential treatment under free trade agreement, this product needs to meet the rules of origin of, of the trade agreement that you're using. And uh, I'll go into the rules of origin uh, into more details in a, in a few slides. So uh, many FTAs, they also establish tariff rate quotas known as TRQs for certain agri-food products, for example, for sugar containing products, for some seafood, meat, dairy, uh, peanut butter. And uh, tier Q is a, is a quota uh, that allows uh, a limited quantity of a product to be imported uh, at a lower or zero tariff rate uh, into a country. Say you may export your beef meat, for example, under these provisions to the European Union uh, duty-free. And uh, TRQs, they are usually quarters that are annual and uh, are filled in on a first come, first serve basis. So another type of quota uh, is called origin quotas. And this is another mechanism that can help you, your product to be, to be more competitive, even if it does not meet the rules of origin. So under these origin quotas, a set quantity of product that includes non-Canadian or other source materials, they can nevertheless um, qualify as originating and also receive a preferential tariff treatment under an FTA. So some examples of goods that are uh, qualified for origin quotas, for example, under the CETA agreement are sugar confectionery and then chocolate preparations, also dog and cat food and uh, some textiles too. 
But of course, there are also um, something else that uh, FTAs can do, which can save you even more than tariff reductions and tariff eliminations. And this is addressing non-tariff barriers. So non-tariff barriers are as important, even more important sometimes than, uh, than tariff barriers. And also modern FTAs, they include provisions that promote bilateral cooperation and transparency on sanitary and uh, phytosanitary related issues. And uh, FTAs also help to deal with the differing standards and duplicative testing and uh, unreasonably uh, onerous um, labeling sometimes or certification requirements. So many FTAs, they also encourage um, the use of internationally accepted standards and require early notification uh, and publication of technical regulations. So there are also committees within FTAs that help to the partners, the parties to, to discuss and to address the, these non-tariff uh, barriers. And um, finally, the FTAs, they provide the advanced ruling, which uh, helps you businesses to get more uh, certainty about the rules of origin and uh, or harmonized system code that, that applies to your product. So for, uh, for the services sector, so in today's, of course, new age, the FTAs, the Benefit, uh, benefits for trade, they go beyond the, the goods and uh, beyond the, the effect of lower tariffs and also extend to the services sector. So FTAs, they provide greater certainty and uh, reduce perceived business risk while uh, also making doing business more transparent and, uh, and predictable in international markets. So some key commitments for a uh, services sector include, oops, what's going on? Um, so your, uh, your services, for example, should not get a worse treatment than other providers of services from other free trade agreements markets or the WTO partners. And this commitment is known as most favored nation treatment. So uh, you should also benefit from the same treatment as other domestic service providers. And this commitment is known as national treatment. Countries also should not impose restrictions on the quantity or types of entity that can supply the services under the free trade agreements. And there are also the local presence uh, requirements. So under many Canada's FTAs, um, the parties agreed not to require companies to have a local presence in a market uh, as a condition for, for doing business. So there are also commitments on temporary entry and these provisions, they make it easier for, for you to enter markets temporarily as a business visitor uh, and uh, as an investor or as a highly skilled professional. And uh, temporary entry, of course, the, it doesn't replace the, the visa process. And uh, the FTAs, as, as mentioned earlier, they also provide access to government procurement for, for Canadian companies. Uh, so we also often hear from, from you, from companies, uh, whether FTA benefits are automatic if, they, if you export the, your products, your goods to a country that uh, Canada has a free trade agreement with. So a short answer to, to this question is no, you have to, to claim the preferential treatment. So here on this slide, you can see a few steps that uh, you need to keep in mind when uh, you want to trade in markets where Canada has free trade agreements. First, you'd want to check a tariff uh, preference in a select market. And you can do this through Canada's tariff finder using a harmonized system code or, uh, or a keyword for your product. And here on this slide, you can see some embedded links and uh, you'll be able to, to access them in the PDF version of this presentation once it is shared with you after, after this webinar. So uh, once you have identified uh, your uh, preferential tariff, uh, the next step would be uh, to check the rules of origin compliance. And rules of origin are the rules around the amount of domestic content in a good. And uh, to be able to take advantage of a trade agreement preferential tariff, you need to prove that your good meets the rules of origin under that agreement. And uh, of course, rules of origin, they are product specific and uh, sometimes they can be complicated. 
uh, and they also they can, can also be agreement specific. And uh, we we are happy to to help you to figure out those for your product if if you are in doubt. So once you have completed first two steps, uh, you need to uh, fill in the certificate of origin information. And the information needed for these certificates can vary by by agreement, but it is usually uh, quite simple and straightforward. And again, you have an embedded link here that will bring you to the um, Canada's um, website, I believe, uh, that will have a few links from there to different free trade agreements to the certificate of origin or uh, another type of document uh, to, to provide in the US. Ghana, if I may, uh, I'm sure had a question related to uh, certificate of origin. For sure. He asks, if you are a manufacturer, how do you get a certificate of origin? Um, so it, uh, it really depends. Uh, under certain trade agreements, uh, this is the, the importer uh, or the exporter can fill in uh, or even the manufacturer can fill in the certificate of origin. Um, and again, um, we'll need to, to check and probably provide a one-on-one -on -one assistance to, to the company, uh, depending on the, on the product that they produce. Uh, or and, and also the market where they want to uh, sell their product. Um, again, sometimes it is just to certify that your product has been manufactured under in Canada and you want to use the preferential treatment with the European Union, you want this agreement to apply to your product and uh, you provide the, uh, the basic information about the product and the, the company, the manufacturer, the exporter, the importer. Uh, sometimes it is more onerous, the information is a bit more onerous and you need to provide some supporting documents. Um, again, it, it depends agreement by agreement. Um, sometimes it is really, as I, as I mentioned, a very simplified version uh, of of the information, sometimes it's a bit it's a bit more uh, detailed, but uh, we are happy to, to to help to figure out the uh, this information. So please connect with me, and uh, uh, there will be my contact details or Heather's contact details at the last slide of the presentation. Hope it answers the question a little bit. I, I think it does, and uh, that you're sharing uh, your details with the audience, they will be able to connect with you directly. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thanks, Arshana. Um, so finally, uh, once we are done with the certificate of origin, uh, we, um, we come to this buzzword that I've already mentioned a couple of times in my presentation, the advanced rulings. Uh, so uh, the advanced rulings, if you, this is a, a very efficient tool in Canada's free trade agreements, and it helps you uh, to, to make sure uh, how another country's customs administration will treat your product upon arrival, uh, even before you ship it. So you can request an advanced ruling on tariff uh, or origin information. Um, and uh, basically this, this will help uh, to expedite the customs clearance and provide you more certainty about how a customs administration of a recipient country will treat your product uh, before at, at the border before uh, the product even arrives there. And uh, so now let's take a quick look at some uh, tools for goods experts and uh, for uh, service. Uh, yeah, for, this will be for goods experts um, that will help you to uh, to do business in international markets where Canada has free trade agreements. So this is the slide for Tariff Finder, uh, Canada's Tariff Finder that I've mentioned before. And um, again, it's very useful and helpful tool for you to see how uh, see the, the tariffs that your product will face in uh, or the absence of tariffs that your product will face in Canada's free trade agreements markets. Uh, it is really user friendly if you if you check this uh, this link here and uh, all you need to do is to enter the keyword or the harmonized systems code for your product. Um, and again this uh, this only applies to the markets where Canada has free trade agreements. Uh, and uh, you can also see what, uh, compare what, what is the tariff that applies to the markets they, that say that do not have this free trade agreement with, uh, with the partners, say with the Chile. Uh, you'll see what is the most favored nation tariff, uh, which will be 
was probably much higher than for, for a Canadian product. So BC also has a network of trade and uh, investment representatives that are located worldwide. And uh, you might know from your own firsthand uh, experience that sometimes it can be a challenge uh, to know what's going on in a market that is halfway across the globe and uh, let alone to make a connection, a valuable connection and to, to establish a trust with the, with the business. So that is why there is a network of VC trade and investment representatives that is shown on this map. Um, and it has grown uh, to 16 offices that cover all of our major markets. And the role of uh, these trade representatives is to help uh, VC businesses uh, to find partners uh, in uh, um, international markets uh, and uh, yeah, to find buyers, potential buyers and uh, to attract investors um, and uh, other players. And uh, they, they also facilitate your participation in trade shows and, uh, and so on. Uh, and they can also provide you the valuable market uh, intel. So in some markets where we don't have trade investment representative networks, we, we rely on Canada's trade commissioner service and we can also help you to connect with them. And uh, finally, um, so this is another um, trade support program that I'd like to highlight here, which is called the Expert Navigator Program. So unlike trade and investment representative network, the BC Expert Navigator program, um, their advisors are located closer to, to home. And this program offers you access to community-based expert specialists who, uh, who will provide you with a personalized um, and step-by-step -step approach to exporting and help you connect with the market information, expert programs, financial services, and um, yeah, business development uh, experts. So these advisors, they are specifically geared towards assisting uh, those of you who are based in uh, business regions, as opposed to the lower mainland or capital region areas. And this map shows you the regions that are served by the advisors. And uh, also this program has advisors working specifically with women, with indigenous and uh, youth owned businesses. So I think this is our last slide. So we'll probably wrap our presentation here. And uh, I hope it was not too, too dense or too technical. And um, so just close, uh, close by saying that uh, we continue to, to support uh, people and businesses in, in the recovery from, from the pandemic. And uh, we assist uh, companies with leverage in the, the opportunities in Canada's free trade agreements. And if this is something that that you consider uh, and that you're interested in uh, or that you want to have more information about, please contact us and uh, we'll make sure that uh, we'll get you the information and the assistance that you need. So thank you for your attention and I think we can probably proceed to the Q&A from now. Uh, I would ask the audience to send in their, either unmute themselves and ask their question or send in their questions in chat. But meanwhile, I had a couple of questions. Uh, Ghana and Heather, I was wondering if, um, so I had a client call in and ask, how do I make sure that my products receive duty-free treatment in foreign markets when it is, uh, when it is available? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, again, duty-free treatment uh, is not something that is, given and it's not something that uh, is there automatically, right? Uh, as I've mentioned, there are uh, countries where Canada has free trade agreements. And if, say, if the country want, if the company wants to sell their product, say, to, to Australia, uh, right? Australia is part of the CPTPP agreement uh, as well as Canada is. So uh, we'll, we'll need to figure out what is the, the tariff for that product, first of all, we can use the uh, Canada Tariff Finder uh, tool that I've mentioned. Uh, once we know what what tariff applies, if it is zero tariff, then we'll need to figure out whether the the good uh, qualifies for the preferential treatment. So the um, the rules of origin. Here comes the the rules of origin. We'll need to figure out the uh, the exact 
rule that applies to the product. If the product qualifies for the rules of origin, we'll need to, uh, to fill in the certificate of origin, or sometimes it is called the declaration of origin, um, to prove that we want to claim this preferential tariff treatment under this agreement. And uh, here is the, the basis for it, say our product um, confirms with the rules of origin. Um, and yeah, basically the, the three steps are here. Uh, sometimes there can be some nuances and sometimes businesses uh, might want to, to double check with the customs brokers and uh, sometimes brokers also are not very well versed. We have um, sometimes seen that this can be the case with some markets. Um, some customs officials, some customs authorities are also more uh, cooperative than others uh, sometimes, but again, um, in general, the I would say the, the steps are uh, here. Figure out the tariff, figure out the um, uh, the rules of origin for your product, and uh, fill in the the declaration. Uh, again, there are also like lots of uh, other documents uh, that needs to be uh, that needs to accompany the shipment, but uh, they are like not related to to the um, uh, to the preferential tariff treatment. Thank you. I think that was very, very helpful. So if anybody in the audience has any questions, uh, uh, Terrell, Terrell, did you have a question? You can unmute and ask your question. Um, I did have a question and I, I sent it in. Um, exporting is totally overwhelming for me. So thank you for the presentation. At least I know where to go and ask for help now. Um, I have a, a Kuzma ruling for a material I sell, a product I sell to the US, um, but I'm wanting to also ship it to Mexico. Um, can I use that same ruling um, with when I'm exporting to Mexico as either like support or evidence about having gone through the process or do I need to redo it again um, to, to ship to Mexico? Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Terrell. I I think, if I'm not mistaken, the advanced ruling for Fukushima uh, would be, um, it is custom specific usually. So if you have the one that is done for the US, you might want to do another one for Mexico, since those advanced rulings, they are um, uh, provided by the customs authorities. So unfortunately, there is no like universal customs ruling for like certain trade agreements if there are multiple countries that are involved. Say, if you want to, to do the same for the CETA, for the European Union market, uh, you would need to apply, say, for advanced ruling in Germany. And then if you want to have the same advanced ruling in, in the Netherlands, they might recognize the German one, but you might also they might also say that, no, you need to apply once again. Um, this can be the case with Mexico too. So I would need to double check uh, for that. But uh, my gut tells me that you would need to apply for, for a separate one with, uh, with Mexico customs authorities. Okay, thank you. I, I can check that. Okay. I had another question from another client of mine and I'm sure I will send her this recording. Um, so she asked, what do I do if my products are charged duties that I don't agree with? Hmm. Um, I know, Heather, do you want to take the question or do you? Yeah, sorry, I'm not really sure I follow the question. So, so what do I do if my products are charged duties that I don't agree with? Um... To be, I'm I'm not really too sure. Gunny, do you want to take that one? I'm, I don't oh, know. Yeah, sure. I can I can take that uh, that one. So if this is uh, under the free trade agreement, I would say that uh, uh, the company there there is a provision um, actually in every free trade agreement that allows you uh, that allows companies to claim uh, the duties that have been unduly charged, uh, and uh, usually you have up to three years to seek the refund from the customs authorities. Um, and again, it, it can be a process, like it's not it's not going to happen like tomorrow if you claim them today, but you need to provide the information um, to prove that your product 
again, meets the rules of origin and qualifies for the preferential tariff treatment. And then the, the customs authorities normally should, should refund uh, the, the duties that have been unduly charged. Thank you, that helps. So Gaina, just, uh, just to take that question forward a little bit, can a client pay duties and then go back and claim the free trade uh, you know, waiver of duties for a product that has already been sold? Um, yeah, the, this is the case. This is normally okay. how this mechanic works. Okay. Um, but again, as I say, like th there is the refund process. It just might not happen as quickly as as the refund. Say here in the when you return the good that you um, have just bought and you return it and you get the refund in a few days. Um, it can take a bit a bit longer than that, and uh, there might be some some documents that you need to provide to prove. Um, that your products, that your goods in the first place, they qualified for the preferential uh, tariff treatment. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Thanks for that. So is there a list of countries that Canada does not have free trade agreements with? A list of countries? <laughs> um, well, that would be probably hard to, to name. The, the, the list, the uh, the countries that we do not have a free trade agreement with, but uh, um, we might uh, either go back to the um, to the slide uh, with, uh, with with map uh, with the world map where we um, where there were some countries where Canada has free trade agreements with, and uh, there were also the countries where we have. Um, the exploratory talks or the current uh, negotiations that are taking place. Uh, but uh, basically, as, as it was mentioned, we have uh, 14 free trade agreements. I know there were like, the, the uh, numbers varied from 14 to 15. Uh, so currently we have 14 trade agreements with 49 countries. Um, and um, those were the countries that were in blue on the um, on one of the header site. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so those countries, they, they would represent around 90% of Canada's um, trading partners anyways. Thank you, thanks for that. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Uh, looks like we don't. Well, then I will take this opportunity to thank you, Ghana, and thank you, Heather, for joining us. This was an incredible session. Uh, we will, we've got a list of uh, clients who've asked for this recording as well. Um, so there are going to be many, many that will benefit from this session. Uh, before we uh, say bye, I wanted to just inform the audience that uh, we have uh, our one-on-one -on -one mentoring program applications that are open until June 3rd. And uh, we have many, many workshops that have been uh, organized for in the month of June. Uh, we've got a series on marketing that starts on June 7th. Please sign up for our e-news and e-blast uh, uh, through our website. Uh, a list of all the workshops that we're conducting is also accessible on our website. It is we-bc.ca. Um, Nera, before we say goodbye, I was uh, wondering if you could launch the poll. Please do let us know if there is any other webinar that you want us to hold in the future. Meanwhile, I wanted to thank all of you for joining us today. Um, goodbye, everyone. Thank you, Heather, and thank you, Ghana, for being here. Thank you for having us, and thanks for the questions. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate your... I'm just uh, waiting for a couple more uh, people from the audience to complete the poll before saying goodbye.
All right, everyone. Goodbye. Have a good day. Thank you.